Welcome to the session of Level Up, creating ePortfolios with WordPress, created by Dana Watts for the K-12 Online Conference 2012. Here we go. What does it mean to participate in purposeful play and to level up? And how does that connect to ePortfolios? Well, teaching students that making time for play is instrumental in fostering a passion for lifelong learning. Yet all too often, we run out of time to reflect in a classroom setting. We simply move on to the next thing because our curriculum dictates that we need to do so. An ePortfolio allows us the freedom to fiddle, tinker, explore, discover, try, sometimes fail, and rearrange. We can accomplish this by leveling up and gaining experience. The more a student engages in this sort of experience, the more their confidence and ability to begin to grow. Imagine a world where students are judged by the accumulation of their learning. E-portfolios are a tool and they have the capacity to have the most significant effect on education since the introduction of formal teaching. Today's international student is constantly on the move and in a period of transition. Therefore, it is paramount that these institutions have a clear picture of the progress and achievements of their incoming and outgoing students. An e-portfolio program in a school has the potential to transform the way we think about looking at student readiness for future courses, advancement, and college admissions. And a successful e-portfolio program has the possibility to even replace a traditional transcript and the college-bound essay. So what is an e-portfolio? Well, it's basically an electronic web-based portfolio that allows students a space in which they can select and collect evidence of their learning. But the most important part is it's a place to reflect upon the process in which this knowledge was gained. With the emergence of Web 2.0 tools, learning is no longer confined to the traditional classroom. To reflect the changes and challenges of our emerging student population, an e-portfolio allows students the ability to showcase their interests and love for lifelong learning well beyond the confines of the classroom walls. An e-portfolio allows students the freedom of expression and the power to control who and what others are reading about them on the web. So why start with a blog? Well, a blog is a nice uh, entry level into creating a digital footprint that students feel like they have some control over and it starts to negate any negative images or things that may have been said about them on social networks and helps them create an academic profile where they get to highlight their goals and achievements in an academic world. A blog allows you to have a transference of knowledge from one education or an institute to another. So many universities and so many schools, international and local, are starting to use blogs as a as a portal for student learning. Blogs are easily transportable. You can transport a blog from one platform from another, from WordPress to Edublogger, from Edublogger to Blogger. They are accessible to parents and to other schools, and they create an academic digital footprint that can counter a negative social networking profile. This is an example of a blog. It's a depository for immediate thoughts, a place for homework to go, and it's an ongoing role of someone's education. A blog basically touches upon the bottom level of Bloom's taxonomy, applying, understanding, and remembering. An e-portfolio showcases learning over a period of time, and it gives students a place to reflect upon their learning. It allows them the freedom to make cross-curricular connections and showcase their potential as a learner to the world. In a digital world where social media continues to grow exponentially, teaching students to have a handle and take control of their digital footprint is essential to their digital literacy skills. In addition, an e-portfolio touches upon all levels of blooms, creating, evaluating, analyzing, applying, understanding, and remembering. The reflection piece is essential for transforming a blog into an e-portfolio. It touches upon the creative, 
evaluative and analytical side of an ePortfolio and of Blooms. So how do you create an ePortfolio on WordPress and where do you even start? Follow me through these eight simple steps and I'll teach you how to do it. This is an example of a sample ePortfolio. Across the top, you can see the pages are showcased. It shows an evidence of progression of learning over a period of time, from year to year and subject to subject. In addition, underneath the About Me page, there will be an academic and extracurricular activities so that students can showcase that part of their learning. Step one is creating pages, and you add pages on the dashboard for each school year that the students enrolled in school. The next thing to do is to create subpages for each subject area. It may be humanities, math, science, Spanish, whichever subjects the students are currently enrolled in. And then underneath page attributes, you list as the parent page, year six or year seven, whichever grade level the student happens to be in. When you're done, it will look something like this on the dashboard. And it will look something like this to the outside world. I also highly recommend that you have students create an About Me page with subpages underneath where they can showcase their after school activities, any community service they may be involved in, drama productions, sports, things of that nature. It helps students start to take a handle on their digital footprint. It will look something like this on the main page of the ePortfolio. The next step is to create categories. Categories are basically for the main subject areas that the student's going to study in school. I would have students uh, go to their dashboard and then they go to categories and then they begin to add new categories. So in the name section of this, they would write say science eight and then down at the bottom, they would click add new category. It will look like this on the student's dashboard with a list of their subjects listed underneath the posts as a potential way to categorize. Step three involves adding links and link categories back to the main school and to teacher web pages. It really helps the students start to see their blog or their ePortfolio as their portal to learning and everything that's connected to school. At the bottom of that page, you can add new categories. Two essential parts are important links in my classes. Important links will be used to link back to the school and my classes to classes. On the dashboard, the links will be listed on the left hand side and on the far right you'll see the categories that the students have listed them under. Important links in my classes and things of that nature. The next step is to add widgets. You need to do this so that the links are placed over on the side sidebar. So you go underneath appearance and click on widgets and you look at the links bar. You take the bar and you drag it over to the far right hand side. The next step is to add some very cool widgets. This really helps the students take ownership of their own learning and helps their intrinsic motivation. Um, the top widget is Creative Commons, then um, a cluster map, and Shelfari. We'll start with Shelfari. Shelfari can be found at shelfari.com, and what it does is it allows you to showcase all of your reading on one side of your blog. This is really quintessential for students who are involved in an independent reading program and allows them to showcase their reading inside and outside of school. When you go to shelfari.com, and, and once students are done adding some books, it's very easy to click on the bottom where you, it says create a bookshelf for my blog. And the students then get a code and they can add that onto their blog underneath text. Adding the HTML code is quite easy. Underneath text, underneath the widget area, the students can write in visitors or my flat map or whatever they want copy and paste the code into there, press save, and automatically appears on the sidebar of their blog ePortfolio. In addition, a really nice uh, widget to add is something called a cluster map. Cluster maps uh, help students see where their readers are coming from. This really helps students as far as learning that their voice 
is bigger and stronger than just uh, what they're something that they're handing in to their teacher. They start to see where people from all over the world are going through and reading what they're writing on a regular basis. Creative Commons is also another thing that's very important for the students to have on their blog. Um, if you don't know about Creative Commons, I suggest you listen to probably one of the other sessions within the K-12 online presentations um, that talks to you about Creative Commons and the importance of copywriting and protecting your own work and the work of other people. Step six involves linking any portfolio to a homework calendar. This can be easily created if your student's using Google Apps for Education and having students start to subscribe to their teacher's Google calendars. That then in turn becomes a Google calendar and a homework calendar that they can link from their blog. Thanks to my creative colleague, Maureen Collin, she figured out a way to make it so that the students could subscribe to all of their teachers' blogs, and then we linked them through their calendar details, and we grabbed the HTML code once the students had subscribed to all of their teacher blogs and added them to all of our students' blogs at AES. This is an example of what a homework calendar would look like on a student blog. This is my son's blog, uh, homework calendar, and on the top you can see the tabs for week, month, or agenda. He personally enjoys looking at this to see what day of the week it is, and then the periods that follow, in addition to all the assignments that he is due each day. He can also click on the agenda tab on the top and be able to see it like a real old fashioned agenda where you would write everything down. This also takes out the user issue where students used to write down their homework and not always have the correct assignment or the correct pages and this makes it so the teachers are also writing it down and parents can see it at home. One of the most essential pieces of the ePortfolio is to have a place for a reflection. On most blogs, you have a place where you can have a search engine on the top right hand corner of your blog in um, your sidebar. From there, that's where you would search and take those categories that you created in the beginning that would be like Science 8 or Humanities 8 and insert it into that area and see what blog posts come up. Then that gives students a chance to reflect on those blog posts and look at their learning in all one, in one area together. When you do a search, um, for example, in this one, I believe I did um, English 10. Um, it came up with everything that I wanted to look for um, within um, anything that I had categorized within that, ca that category on my blog. So I found all the different things that I had written about so that I could go back if I was a student and write about those. Here are a few things that you could use to help students reflect on their learning after they do this type of search. Like what skill did they learn this quarter or what's one challenge um, that you found in your writing or learning this year or three or four things that you think went really well and there's a variety of different things that students could reflect upon. Um, if you'd like some more ideas if you click on um, some ideas for a reflection for ePortfolios I believe that will lead you to this Google Doc that I created where it gives you different ideas and creative ways to integrate technology in with the reflection. Step 8 is to have others look at your ePortfolio profile. An ePortfolio profile is the online presence and personality of an ePortfolio. After completing an ePortfolio profile, which I'll show in just a minute, students can share their findings with the original ePortfolio owner and help that student work on creating a digital impression that they that really represents their academic life. This is a sample ePortfolio profile that I created for my students and what I would do is have the students normally try to um, do an ePortfolio profile of other students in the class that maybe they don't know a whole lot about. Um, in doing that, I have them look at something that they would notice the first time they look at their ePortfolio, then one word they might use to describe that student, and does that student look or appear to be interested in learning? Do they have any outside activities that they like to be involved with? And then to give them two pieces of constructive feedback, 
one room um one suggestion for improvement then i also have the students check to see is the student giving away too much private information like their phone number and address and hangouts and then based on the e-portfolio what grades do you think that student's getting in class this is quintessential for students to have an idea of how they're presenting themselves online so this brings us to the end of my presentation um when I think about e-portfolios, it's part of my passion, it's something that I feel really strongly about because it empowers students to take ownership of their learning. And when I think back to Angela Meyer's keynote on this, she says, through play we find ourselves. And e-portfolios give students that quintessential piece to be able to play and they can mess up and they can get dirty and they can try new things and then they can reflect on their learning and it just gives such a better picture of a whole child. Um, before becoming really passionate about technology, I was an English teacher and the portfolios were the pieces that I felt represented my students the most. They were the things I most wanted to showcase in a parent-teacher conference. It's a, an e-portfolio is a celebration of play and if we can get all the other stuff out of the way and just let kids play once in a while, then the play becomes the work and that's where the learning happens. Thank you for joining me and if you'd like to learn more, um, please feel free to follow me on my blog or on Twitter or wherever else uh, things become created. Bye.